All right, I figured I'd say a few words about my latest project. Um, well, first of all, I am back in my own shop because like every other school in the country, we evacuated due to coronavirus. So I'm back home now for the rest of the semester and for the summer, uh, which hopefully means I'll be able to get done a lot more projects than I had previously planned for the summer, which is great. Uh, and this is what I'm working on right now. It's a turbo molecular vacuum pump. Uh, <clears throat> turbo molecular pumps are a kind of vacuum pump that is designed to obtain extremely deep vacuums, uh, much deeper than you could get with any kind of traditional uh, mechanical pump. Uh, I won't go into the physics of like exactly how it works because it's not pertinent, <laughs> um, but basically you have this rotor here, which is very pretty. Um, this is machined from solid round stock. Um, this one has five stages. A lot of turbo molecular pumps have a lot more, but it's just the limitations of what I could pull off or what I figured I could pull off. Uh, and this rotor will go inside this housing and spin at about 60,000 RPM, which is pretty crazy. Uh, that's enough that the tips of the blades will be going just about the speed of sound, um, <clears throat> which is difficult to pull off. There's a lot of stored energy. When that rotor's at full speed, you're dealing with about 10,000 foot-pounds of energy, which is quite a lot. It's terrifying, honestly. Um, the whole thing is supported on these little cheap Chinese uh, ceramic bearings, full ceramic bearings from Amazon. These were like $11 each or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> one of them will go in here. This plate on top held in by these six machine screws. Uh, pull them out. Bearing goes in there, clamps it down. That bearing is held in place by the outer race. Uh, and then this little spigot fits through here. The bearing fits on that. And then this little guy threads on the end. Come on. Come on now. There we go. It goes on the end and that'll clamp the bearing by the inner race. So this bearing on this side will be clamped, clamped on the inner race and clamped on the outer race and held fixed. And that basically sets the location of the whole rotor. Um, on the other side, let's move this around. Uh, on this side, we have bolt hole pattern and a little O-ring groove where I made an O-ring of the appropriate length that'll fit in there. And this goes on this side. Uh, you can see there's dowel pins to align it, so it only goes on one way to maintain concentricity. Uh, and another ceramic bearing, same one, it will fit on this shaft. And that fits in the back, in the central bore in the back of the rotor here. Uh, and that's just a slightly loose fit. Uh, well, let me slightly loose. Lightly snug fit. Yeah, it's just enough that if the rotor were to expand or something, this bearing can float and can move axially, while the other bearing stays fixed. You don't want the bearings on both sides to be completely rigid, because uh, then this rotor, which is at extremely high speeds, it might heat up due to the drag. Now it'll be spinning in a vacuum, but if a little bit of air leaked in there, that's a lot of air resistance and the rotor could get very, very hot. And if it expands, you know, axially, it could push outwards on the bearings. And if they're held rigidly, that's going to put a lot of force on the bearings and you could destroy them. Um, on a steel bearing, it's not a huge deal. On a ceramic bearing, they might, when they fail, that might mean they explode. Uh, and if the ceramic bearing explodes, including the inner and outer race, not just the balls, because it's full ceramic. Uh, well, this is at extremely high speed, that could be very, very dangerous. So we want to do everything we can to minimize the forces on that bearing and make sure it does not fail. Uh, that didn't stop me from buying $11 Amazon bearings though. But that's why one side is floating, the other side is rigidly mounted. Uh, this side, which is this side, is the low vacuum side, which is to say it's normal vacuum, not extremely high vacuum. So just a normal O-ring is okay to seal it um, <clears throat> on this side. That's not a problem. On the other side, though, that's the high vacuum side. You can't just go ahead and slap any old O-ring on there and expect it to work, uh, which is why this spoke assembly that holds the bearing is on the inside. It doesn't bolt onto the face <clears throat> because that would create a seal or a plane that would have to be sealed. 
by putting it on the inside, well, it doesn't matter. The whole thing's just in the vacuum. Now, I know what you're thinking. I got the holes for these little screws, these radial screws. Uh, basically, I'm going to TIG weld over each one of these little holes from the outside, which is fine because the screw goes in the inside as long as I'm careful enough to not ruin too much of the thread. That should be okay. And I can seal that up. And now this whole thing in here is inside of the deep vacuum section. And I don't have to worry about any seals. I mean, at some point, the pump will have to be attached to a chamber, which will probably be done by adding a, a flange that's wider around the outside and having bolts holes around this way. Um, but for now, I'm not concerned myself with that. I just wanted to design this so that it would not interfere uh, with whatever I ultimately choose to do to mount this to the vacuum chamber. <coughs> um, because bearing in mind, normal rings, not good enough for high vacuum. Uh, it's also why I'm using ceramic bearings. Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, extremely high speeds. You kind of need ceramic bearings. You can't use a steel bearing. Um, but the reason it's full ceramic as opposed to something like a hybrid bearing, uh, because you can't use any oil in a high speed, uh, a high vacuum application rather, um, because the oil will vaporize, it'll off gas, and it'll spoil your vacuum. So you can't use any oil. You have to run the bearings completely dry at 60,000 RPM spinning a rotor that weighs almost three pounds. Pretty crazy. Um, <clears throat> the next thing I'm working on, so this is the inlet side where the air or whatever would be going in, pushed through the veins. It'll come out through a port in the side that I haven't machined yet. So then if it's coming out through the side, that begs the question of why is this, this side on the back open? Um, <clears throat> because it's got to be sealed up, or at the very least, it's connected to vacuum. Neither one of those is the case. Um, while this is sitting in here, oh, no, can't balance that. While this is sitting in there, this face completely fills up those little open sectors. And there's a strange pattern in the back of this uh, for a reason. The round holes, well, let's just, the round holes will hold magnets, uh, neodymium magnets half inch by a quarter of alternating polarity and those magnets then I could put a got plastic over here cut a sheet of plastic basically that fills up this space and is epoxy probably epoxied down uh, again this is the low vacuum side so I can go I can use things like adhesives without completely ruining my vacuum um, <clears throat> seal it down so the plastic will provide the seal the vacuum tight seal but the magnets the magnetic flux will go through the plastic and then I could have another magnetic assembly on the outside a coupling and yeah, now I've created a magnetic coupling from the outside to the inside so I can drive the rotor from the outside um, that's important because it's a little tricky to build like a motor and put the whole motor in a vacuum because it'll probably overheat because it won't have any uh, air to cool it down and it won't be able to can can convect heat away or conduct heat away uh, so it'll rapidly overheat. So you want the motor probably on the outside to prevent it from overheating so that it can be cooled. Either that or have like a liquid cooled motor, which I don't want to deal with. Um, so but so you want a magnetic coupling so that you can drive it. It's in the vacuum and you can drive it from outside in the atmosphere. Perfect. Uh, but you have magnets next to what would have been just a solid sheet of aluminum. Is That's pretty much the definition of an eddy current break. So the eddy current losses induced by the magnets in that sheet would be absolutely insane. Um, probably probably in the order of kilowatts of power being dumped into this little piece of aluminum, which would probably end up just melting uh, pretty quickly. And not to mention it would take an insane amount of power just to keep the rotor spinning. So you mill out these areas, creating three loops. And these are the loops that the eddy currents will be induced in. But because there are three loops symmetrically and there are six magnets symmetrically, uh, alternating polarity, that means that at any given point in time, there's pretty much gonna be two magnets in each of these sectors. Those two magnets have opposite polarity, which means if you're familiar with Ampere's law, the total magnetic flux through this loop, through all the other loops, will be pretty much constant as the rotor rotates. So this particular pattern you know, there's a reason there's three here. If I did like four openings or five or six or anything like that, uh, it would still have eddy current losses. It might be a little bit better, but not by much. Uh, this, particularly having three, should 
make it so that the total flux through each loop is pretty much constant and balanced and as a result the, the eddy current losses should be pretty minimal. You're just dealing with the weird transitional period where one magnet leaves and the other magnet enters and that I'm hoping is not going to be too bad. Um, that's the current plan. It would also be belt driven, a timing belt. So yeah, imagine a timing belt sitting around that going at 60,000 RPM. That's going to be incredibly loud. Uh, it's pretty much foolproof. Like it's, 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 it'll, it'll, well, I don't know. The, the time belt might beat itself to death. But if that didn't happen, uh, it's a pretty easy way of going about it. Uh, it's just a matter of getting a strong enough timing belt, I guess, and having a small enough pulley on here so the surface speed of the belt is not too high, which I, I believe I, I got it good enough. It's still kind of noisy. I sped it up on air. Uh, I had the whole thing together and ran it on air for a little bit. Um, works well. It, it, the bearings are a little noisy, but full ceramic bearings, I think, are always kind of noisy. That's just the fact that they're so stiff and everything, it just transmits all the noise and gets loud. Um, so I'm not sure if that means the bearings are damaged <laughs> already, or just low quality, um, or if it's just the nature of the bearing. We'll see. I mean, I didn't have a tachometer, and it was pretty hard to... I mean, I have no idea how fast it was going. So I think I'm going to try to get like a tachometer or something set up. Alright, here's a quick addendum to that video. Uh, I recorded that about a month ago uh, and never got around to posting it until now, so it's a little um, out of date. So I can update you on a few of the other things I did. Uh, I have the rotor inside of here. There you go. Um, and I have the magnetic coupling. So this is, you might be able to see there's no linkage between this and the rotor on the inside except for the magnets. Um, the shaft is not spinning, this is a fixed shaft. Uh, this is on bearings, <coughs> so if I spin this, yeah, spin the rotor. I had this little motor mounted up here with a pulley and a timing belt to drive it. <coughs> this was not powerful enough, so now I have a much larger motor. Um, this is a brushed motor, this is brushless, and it's also water-cooled, so uh, I think that will I'll be able to get this up to, to full speed that way. Um, I was having issues. I couldn't get enough, couldn't deliver enough current to this motor, um, and it was getting extremely hot. Um, mostly just because it takes so long to spin this thing up because um, of the inertia. 